Hey guys, it's Midnight Block Picker here, and I'm here with a guide on how to pick multi lock interactives with spool driver pins. Multi locks are dimple style locks with telescoping pins. Telescoping pins are just large pins with smaller pins inside of them, and those are typically referred to as pin and pin, which I will show you right here. There's a lip at the top of the smaller pin that prevents it from falling out the bottom of the outer key pin, like that. And in some cases, in my case there is, there's counter milling at the top of each outer key pin, which interacts with the driver pins. It's an undercut just right there. And these driver pins come in different sizes, um, but they are either spooled, serrated, or standard. In my case, they're spooled. If you look at that bo the bottom of that inner pin, there's another spool, and that's what catches inside the counter milling of that outer key pin like that. It's important to keep that in mind because they lock together, as you can see, and requires really light tension to pick. Also, because of the light spring inside that holds these two pins together, that requires really light tension to pick. If I can show you, you can kind of see that there. Um, the core is an interactive core, which all that means is there's a detent, or sorry, not a detent, a ball in slot two. Um, right there. And that ball lifts up the, uh, it, it interacts with the key, and, and it lifts up the key pin in slot two higher than it could be, lift, could be lifted up otherwise. And it makes these locks much less likely to be raked, impressioned, bumped. And more importantly, if you look at the key, it has this um, little black notch right there. And that moves. I've seen these keys growing up and I, actually, I never actually knew, noticed that, which is pretty cool. And that makes it um, impossible to actually visually decode. If you look, they're also double-sided, so another little cool thing. You can put them in either way, and they still work. Dimple locks are considered to be uh, higher security than standard pin tumbler locks, and that's simply just because they require separate tools, specialized feel in order to pick. But really, once you develop that feel, they're not any different than pin tumbler locks, and they work in the exact same way. These are three different um, picks that or uh, picks types, homemade, black flag set, and huck set. My homemade is a, kind of a monstrosity, but it taught me about what to, what not to do. Um, the shaft is way too long, it's too thin, it's very like weak, you can't even lift the pins up with it, the flag is the wrong shape, and everything is wrong about it. The one thing I will say is this beautiful handle uh, mo moving on to the black flag set is uh, these are pretty good. They come ready to go, but the one problem is that the shaft is very weak and that kills a lot of your feedback. And for me, that really was uh, a big hurdle to overcome as a beginner learning how to pick these locks. So um, one thing I will show you here is that they do, when I say c they come ready to go, they do fit inside of those outer pins which I'll show you here and this is something if you don't know you have to make sure that your pick can fit inside of that outer pin or else you won't be able to pick those inner pins separate from the outer pins and it'll make this lock pretty much impossible to pick. As I'm sure you may have already guessed the issue with the huck set as they come is that they do not fit within the key pins. And so what you would have to do is you would have to take something like this, a fine file, and actually file down the edge of this and make it the right shape until you have something more like this. And as you can see, that does fit inside of the key pin nicely. 
just like the black flag set, maybe even better. And the, sh the shaft on these are much sturdier. They do not bend. Even though I thinned them down, sorry about the focus, I thinned this one down because you need to thin it down in order to, for it to work. And I'll show you what I mean by that. When I stick this pick inside, you can see that those outer pins drop back down as I pass them. When I stick this pick, which is not altered, those outer pins stay sticking up as I pass them. So if I have any low cut pins, they will overset and you will not be able to drop back down. So that's another thing that will make this lock pretty much impossible to pick. So again, the black flag picks come ready to go. These ones do not, but you, once you do a little bit of work on them, in my opinion, they're much better than the flag, the black flag sets. Um, you may also notice these lines that I have on my pick and all that is are little markers that I put in place on my pick and the way I did that is I just for example put a pin and slot whatever it doesn't matter and then you will go in with your pick Oops, so use this one and you find that pin make sure you're just lifting that inner pin and not the outer pin right there the way you know is that it'll be locked in place you will, won't actually be able to move it forward or backwards because it's inside of that outer pin at that point you can take a marker and just draw a little notch let me uh, get back on that pin right over here i already have a marker or a mark on my pick so you take a marker and you can make a little mark on your pick that way you know exactly where the each pin is on each single um on every single slot so now getting to picking i'll start by saying there's three stages to picking this lock i find whoops there is the tight fall set and this is uh my experience with the spooled version I can't really speak on the serrated version, um, but with the spooled version, the, the tight fall set starts off as soon as you pick a spooled outer pin, and the, the fall set is just tight. As soon as you let go of tension, you will lose what you've picked. Um, After you've picked all the outer pins, you will drop into this loose fall set. And that loose fall set is so loose that you could let go of your tensioner and you won't even lose any of the, the pins. Um, with a tensioner for this, you can have anything that's just slightly bigger than the keyway and put it on an angle and then turn it in like that. For counterclockwise, for clockwise, you can use something like a Z wrench and do the same thing just like that or the other way so I'll start with counterclockwise once you've picked all of the um, the inner pins that are holding you up in that loose fall set you'll drop into a deep fall set and then there's only one or two inner pins left so I'm on that I'm gonna start on outer pin one I've got uh, counter rotation in the click I like to use heavy tension when I'm Picking these outer pins, heavy to medium to heavy tension. Now outer pin two, counter rotation and the click. Outer pin three, counter rotation, click. Outer pin four, counter rotation and click. And I got a little click from inner pin four. So if you hit any inner pins on the way, it's totally fine. Just focus on the outer pin. So at this point until you get to that loose fall set. Then I pulse the tension just like that. I don't really loosen it because I don't want to drop anything, but I want to let anything that's overset come down in case that happens. Check to see if where I'm at. Um, inner pin on five. Got a little click from him. Inner pin on four, maybe. Then I just pulse the tension and check again. Yeah, inner pin on four. Got a click from him. Again, inner pin on five. 
and I'm in that loose ball set. So I can let go of my tensioner and I don't lose any of the pins. Now I'm just going to check to see where I'm at right now. I have inner pin on one. Got a click from him and he's set. Okay, inner pin on two feels good. Okay, inner pin on three is the only inner pin left before I drop into that deep ball set, I believe. And so you really need super light tension, spe tension especially if you have counter milling on those key pins. So almost like you're taking the tension off altogether. And there we go, deep ball set. So now I gotta just go through the inner pins again one by one. Inner pin one, inner pin two, inner pin three, nothing, inner pin four, nothing, inner pin five, nothing. Go back to the beginning, inner pin one, inner pin two, and we are open. Just like that. And now let's lock it back up. And we're gonna do clockwise because I wanna show you another thing. When you're tensioning clockwise and you're picking from this side, you're actually picking towards the direction you're tensioning. So it makes it really hard when you get to those counter milling pins. So there's, you have to switch to a separate side pick. So I've got the outer pin on one, outer pin on two. I'm trying to find him here really high up there so sometimes he's hiding but I think I got him there I'm just gonna continue down for now and see where what I find outer pin on three okay I'm gonna make sure to use more tension as I'm going through outer pin on five I got a click okay backing out and pulsing the tension going through again and I feel outer pin on two or uh, that's inner pin on one actually but I do feel outer pin on two. It feels binding. Got him. Inner pin on three. Letting go because I'm getting caught in the counter milling there. Inner pin on four. Inner pin on five. And he's getting a little stuck, but I got him. Okay, so now I'm in that loose ball set that if I let go, I'm not gonna drop anything. But because of the tensioner, I know that if I let go, it'll fall out and pull the plug. But um, so it's a, the loose ball set once again, and I'm only held up by, um, I think it's inner pin on not two, it's the inner pin on three. That's what's holding me up right now. And if I pick it with this pick, I'm it, and it's tensioning this way and I'm picking this way, I'll get caught up in that counter milling. So I need to switch to this pick and pick this way against my tensioner. Thank you to the people in the lock picking discord for helping me to figure that out. And again, really light tension and just make sure I'm on it. Just pulse the tension to make sure I didn't lose anything. I think I might have dropped some pins. Just gonna double check to see. Yeah, I lost inner pin four, got him, inner pin five, got him, and I'm back to where I was, I believe. Yep, back to where I was. Just gonna confirm that. Yep. Okay, so, or is that outer pin on three, I think? Maybe that's the outer pin on, yeah, outer pin on three. Yeah, that was the outer pin on three. Just make sure I get back to that loose ball set with no outer pins before I switch to the other side. Okay, there. Now we are back to where we were. Okay, really light tension, gentle. Got him. And we are in that deep ball set once again. And now I just have to search for the last inner pin or two that are that's holding me up. Interact with pin nope continue down three four and five nope let me check one more time one two usually it's number two but sometimes it's not let's draw my tensioner there three and we are open all right let's gut this thing and 
show you the innards. Zoom out a little bit. All right. So first of all, with these kind of style of blocks, two little uh, Phillips head screws, hold this actuator in place, this retaining plate, Oop, didn't quite get them out. And these cores, as you may have noticed from earlier in the video, are serrated all around the core. So. I recommend using a shim when you're getting this just to be extra safe so you don't get any of those little inner pins caught up. Another thing you may notice is this little pin right there. That's a retaining pin preventing bypass and also making the key stopping stopping it from, from going all the way in to this point because if you go too far like that, it won't, you, it won't turn. And so that pin stops it from going in that far and now you can actually turn the lock once it's in the correct position. Um, when you are gutting these, turn the core to 45 degrees. Don't go 90 degrees because if you look at these cores, they have all these extra little pins inside of them, or sorry, extra little holes on the 90 degree side and all around. So you'll, you'll get your inner pins and driver pins or whatever stuck. So a way you can check to see is check to see the top where the, the retaining plate is, and then look at the back to see your core, and there's a dot and a line, and right in the center of that is that 45 degree mark, so there you go. Next, let's get our shim in there, just to be extra safe, get past those driver pins, those inner pins, and other pins if I can. It's a little, Jammed up, but we'll get there. Ah, almost got there. Oh, there's a little nook inside of this side of the shin. Maybe that's holding me up. Sometimes these shims get caught in the serrations, but there, I got past that one. Got to wiggle it in place and be persistent and it will get in there. There we go. Almost. And that's just one more pin. Got to just be persistent. There we go. That's another one. There, and that's a little trick I just figured out. Just push the core just slightly that you don't misalign anything, but then that will help the shim go in further, just like that. All right, and so now it's in the right spot. You want a follower. The follower should be have a diameter of half an inch, and you will put it in just like that. Make sure your key pins are facing upwards, just like that, and just just like that. All right, let's remove these. Slot five, slot four, slot three, slot two. Oh, that was the inner pin from slot two. So let me double check that. No, that was not the inner pin from slot two. Oh yes, it was. And slot one. Now we have our driver pins. And I'll show you a little trick here when you are reassembling your driver pins. Let's get this shim out of here. I was wondering where the pins were. It's like, that's not a pin. So first of all, You'll see the out the inner pin stick up first. You can grab onto that inner pin with your tweezers if you have 
good tweezers and then you can grab the pin just like that when you want to actually put it back in the spring sticks out so you'll have to push it on that spring hopefully you guys can see push it on that spring push it down and then push the follower into the pin so that it's being held in place then you can push from the top of the pin let go of your follower slightly so that you can like release tension on your follower and then you can put the follower back over top just a little trick for reassembling these locks okay now oh and i didn't follow my own advice on how to grab the pin okay so inner driver pin one let me separate these um inner and outer pins while i'm over here oh that was close Okay, spring these springs you want to hold them from they're too big to hold from the side so you want to just grip one of the little rims I don't know if, if that's visible there but just grip one of the little rims and then just be careful you don't fling it out when you let go of it okay driver pin two spring Driver pin three. It's not coming out. There we go. Spring. Oh, they got started kissing. Okay. Driver pin five, spring, and driver pin four, and the spring. All right. Let me zoom in on these pins here, or give you guys a close up, I should say. Okay, so if you look at the driver pins, they're all spool driver pins. The inner pins are all the same um, with those little lips at the top of them. And if you look at the key pins on slots th uh, four and five, they're torpedoes. So those get caught up in the, um, the top, like they get overset and then they get caught up there. So you got to be careful of those guys. One thing I will mention is if you look at the bottom of these pins, they have little serrations. I'm not really sure what why those are there, but uh, yeah, I've seen them before on some other locks. But those are the pins for this lock, and that is my guide on how to pick multi-lock interactives. Hopefully that helps some other fellow pickers out. Feel free to leave any questions or comments I'm um, down below and thank you guys very much for watching and hope to see you guys again. Take care.